Welcome back. Well, a pundit who I follow religiously. I follow him on Twitter. I am a subscriber to his SpencerFernando.com website is Spencer Fernando. And he joins us now via Skype from Winnipeg. Great to see you. Uh, what do you make of last night? It's incredible to me that the results were so similar to what they were in the last election, almost down to the exact number. Yeah, obviously a huge waste of time and money, as I said on Twitter. And, uh, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, people can say, you know, it's, it's good that Trudeau didn't get a majority. That's really the only good thing we can say about the election. I mean, otherwise, it's he's still going to be the prime minister, unfortunately. Uh, O'Toole certainly failed. Jagmeet Singh failed. You know, we saw what happened to Anime Paul. So I don't think anyone really has any uh, you know, reason to be too happy about what happened. It's kind of a loss for everybody. Yeah, I, I thought the strangest comment last night was from Justin Trudeau, who, who got about 32 percent, the lowest number of any winning party in Canadian history. He had a, about a million and a half votes fewer this time than last time because voter turnout was was down. And he said, we have a clear mandate. And I just chuckled because I thought, if this is a clear mandate, what, you know, I mean, um, what would it take for him to realize he doesn't have a clear mandate? I, I think that he's going to do whatever he wants. He thought he could grab a majority. He didn't. But I don't think this is going to change his plans one iota. What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, you look at the Liberals and NDP together, they have a majority of seats, right? And the NDP, you know, I'm sure they're not, not going to want an election for a while. And Trudeau's going to give them everything they want. I mean, their agendas are pretty lined up lately, especially given how far he's moved to the left and how Jagmeet Singh has really been willing to support most of what Trudeau does. So, yeah, sure, he doesn't technically have a majority, but he's going to be able to pass whatever, you know, left-wing legislation he wants. Yeah, I'm worried he's going to bring in that censorship legislation. I'm, I, I want to play for you a clip from his victory speech last night, if you can call it that, because maybe this is just generic outreach. When you win an election, you, you try and seem magnanimous in victory to those who didn't vote for you. And in this case, the 68 percent of Canadians who did not vote for him. Uh, I wonder if there's anything more in it, because, of course, Trudeau has been demonizing people who are not vaccinated. He implies that they're unclean and have to be punished. Take a listen to this clip from Trudeau. And Spencer, my question for you is, is this just generic, hey, I'm the prime minister for everyone, you know, uh, is that just a generic statement, like a Hallmark greeting card, don't read too much into it? Or does this imply that maybe he's going to uh, be a little bit less antagonistic to those who don't want the vax? Take a listen. And if you did not vote for us, I want you to know that we will stand up for you and work for you every single day. Because no matter how you voted, just like no matter where you come from, what language you speak, the color of your skin, the way you pray, I hear you. I hear you when you say that we can only move forward if no one is left behind. Our shared future is built vote by vote, door by door, and above all, person by person. Spencer, so he's talking about not leaving anyone behind, not discriminating based on the way you pray, etc. I noticed he didn't, I mean, he listed some of the things that are protected in our chart of rights, uh, religion, race, gender, etc. I noticed he did not talk about medical status about vaccination status. So he's trying to be the healer, come together, leave no one else behind. He didn't mention unvaxxed people. What do you think? Do you think there's a deeper meaning there? Or are these just cliches and I shouldn't read too much into it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's all really bullshit from him at this point. Uh, we saw the kind of campaign he ran. I mean, look, one, the second he started to think he was losing in the election, he ran the most us versus them demonizing, using a lot of rhetoric we've actually seen that's quite dangerous throughout history, you know, to pit, you know, part of the population against another. So, of course, when he wins, it's easy to play the nice guy when you're the winner, right? Everyone's happy. Oh, I already won. I'm still in power. So I'll be nice today. But it, it, and no, it doesn't mean anything to me. He's he showed, you know, who he really was. And that's a divisive person who will pick Canadians against each other for his own political gain. And I don't think we should, you know, expect anything uh, other than that from him. Yeah. You know, I, I just recently rewatched the film American Psych Psycho. <laughs> And the the crazy talk of the star of that movie 
um, sociopathic, uh, say anything um, to get through the moment really reminded me of Justin Trudeau. And I'm not implying that he's a psychopath. I don't think he is, but I think he is someone who is a manipulator and who will literally say anything in the moment for temporary advantage. And I think last night he wanted to look prime ministerial, but I think he's going to be as brutal as ever. And, and I think he's going to proceed on his vaccine passports. I think he's going to proceed on the censorship. Let me switch gears, though, Spencer. I want to ask you about the conservative leader, Aaron O'Toole. There was a moment there in the campaign where he looked like he might actually pick up seats. There was a moment where pretty much all the polling suggested he would win uh, a minority. At, at, uh, and there was a, a little bit of hope there. Um, I'm not sure why it didn't happen. I have my own theories. But here's what Aaron O'Toole said in his, I'm not going to call it a victory speech, his I don't know if you call it a concession speech, uh, but, but here's what he said. And and I, I show you this language because this is the language he used when he uh, dedicated the party to a carbon tax over the wishes of the party membership that, who had just voted against it. You might recall there was a policy convention a few months ago. Uh, O'Toole wanted to have his uh, liberal light carbon levy in there. The membership were against it, and O'Toole said, I don't, I'm not going to listen to you, and you guys have to change. Listen to that language here again. We have shown ourselves to have the courage to be, co to be bold and to have the courage to change. We must hold fast to that courage. We must show Canadians that we will not waver in our commitment to grow. The courage to change. Now, he talked a little bit earlier about different racial and religious groups. Listen, the Conservative Party is as diverse as any party. I, I don't think any serious critic uh, doubts that. I mean, that's some bad faith CBC types who might call the party racist. So I, I know he's not talking about having more diversity in the party. It's very diverse. I think when he says the courage to change and um, to keep growing, I think he means to keep changing the party policy so it's not quite as conservative. I think that's what that means. I notice he didn't throw a bone to PPC voters, many of whom had, you know, are refugees from the Conservative Party. That's my take. What do you make of that comment by O'Toole? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a good point you make about how diverse the party was. I mean, they had a very diverse caucus under Harper, right? So the idea that diversity is a problem for them doesn't really make sense. And, you know, the, the thing with O'Toole is he, he completely buys into the liberal worldview and then wants to make a few tweaks. And I think that's that's the big problem he has, right? So he's constantly apologizing for the Conservative Party. He's constantly saying it needs to uh, change. He, he moves all the policy towards the liberals and towards the left. And he's obviously going to keep doing that, right? So with the carbon tax, I mean, it's not courageous to betray a promise, you know, and pledges you made to multiple people, multiple organizations, things you said in the leadership race, betray your membership, you know, lie to people. There's nothing courageous about that. It's just, it's opportunism and it's, you know, it's kind of politics at its worst. So he's, he's going to keep giving in to the liberals on every issue and then, and then think that works. It's funny, though, he talks about the party needs to grow. I mean, they didn't grow at all last night. They got exactly what they did. Under Andrew Scheer, Scheer was attacked for being supposedly too conservative on some things. But, I mean... Did they do any better under O'Toole? Did they win in Ontario where he said he could win? Did they win the votes of the people he, I mean, his strategy was obviously to switch the votes, you know, to lose some right-wing votes and then gain some centrist votes. That didn't work. They didn't do better in the GTA and they didn't really improve anywhere. And in many ways, he may have made things worse because he's not only, you know, lost the election, but he also has really validated the, the left-wing liberal worldview. World he's basically said, yeah, they're right about everything. But I don't like how they manage uh, their, their, you know, the, the government. So I'm going to manage it a little differently. But I'm going to give in to them on basically every issue and play into their framing on every issue. So that's not really a win by any means for him. And to say, oh, I held them to a minority. I mean, a lot of organizations helped, you know, hold the liberals to a minority by pushing back on their lies. But I don't think you can give the Conservative Party any credit for that. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.